Hello, this is Ken Small Architect from Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm making this video today to talk to you about one of the frequently asked questions that comes up often on a project that we're designing. And uh, a lot of people don't understand how it works and also the uh, method of applying this particular information has changed lately. So I'm creating this little frequently asked question type video to explain to you how um, soils reports and soils conditions relate to your new architectural construction project. Um, one of the things that's quite interesting about Las Vegas is that when you're driving around uh, looking for a piece of property, sometimes everything looks the same, um, particularly if you're looking at a series of lots going down a street, they may all, for all intents and purposes, be the same. But um, some things are uh, not readily apparent and soils conditions are one of them. And uh, so you may see um, one lot on one side of town that's selling for half a million dollars and another lot on another side of town or blocks away or even across the street that's selling for $50,000 and you wonder, um, is the $50,000 lot really a good deal? And uh, one of the things that people have been surprised by in the past is that soils conditions can make a very big difference in the cost of your project. Typically, if you are going to build a new ground up project of any sort, you are going to need a soils report. If you're going to purchase property, then you should always ask for a soils report if one exists. You may not necessarily want to buy one but you will at least want to obtain one if it exists. So um, if there's one from years ago and nothing has been done to the property lately, then this would be good enough for the purchase of the property. But um, although a lot of people ask if they can reuse old soils reports, lately they have required that the soils investigators, the soils engineers, uh, dig deeper than they did in the past. So this has negated the value of a lot of older soils reports, but nevertheless as um, affects the due diligence that you do when you buy a property, um, getting a free one, uh, one that somebody else has already paid for when you're in the course of negotiations is a good idea because free is free. And um, if you're um, then dependent on what the conditions are of the lot, um, you may decide to go ahead and purchase one before closing on the property to discover any subsurface conditions. So why is a soils report important and why would I pay say at least $3,500 and possibly a lot more for a soils report? And the answer is um, in a lot of parts of the country the underground subsurface conditions are fairly consistent. So one place where I lived, you could pretty much assume when you were drawing a foundation design that the foundation was going to be poured directly on bedrock. And so whether it's limestone or whether it's granite, um, if you're pouring directly on bedrock, um, you're not going to have to worry about shall we design the foundation this way or that. But um, in other places, and typical of most places uh, throughout the U.S., Las Vegas has varying soils conditions depending on the lot. And literally one lot across from the other can have dramatically different soils conditions. And so uh, taking an example of uh, the most common situation that would significantly affect the cost of your project is um, the design for earthquake um, uh, eventualities when your building is occupied. And uh, when an earthquake occurs, what happens is that you get a horizontal force on the foundation of your building. So the building will go east and west or north and south and um, possibly even up and down. And so depending on what the expectation is of how that happens, you will design the entire structural system of the building in a different way. So the building department mandates that you submit a soils report with a project of any significant size. And by significant size, I mean almost every single 
ground up building that you build will require a soils report. So um, the different types of soils conditions that can exist are you could conceivably end up building on a bedrock here in the valley or up in the mountains more likely. Um, some soil that looks like just desert sand will in, for all intents and purposes turn into a liquid during an earthquake. So your building is floating, your foundation is floating on a bed of water for the few seconds that the earthquake occurs and for this reason um, you're going to design again a completely different foundation system for the building. Now when I say water I don't mean that the dirt actually magically uh, Houdini turns into water, I mean that it liquefies and um, so um, this can happen if you can imagine playing with clay and that uh, depending on how much water is in the clay then clay is basically a liquid. Um, another situation which can occur in the valley is that um, you can have groundwater conditions. So I have seen a situation where you would dig down uh, two or three feet which is the depth of common foundations and find groundwater coming up naturally and of course then you're not only modifying your foundation but you're going to concern yourself in the design of the building with making sure that the water does not bubble up into the interior of the building and this can happen it can pop the floor tiles off your floor um, it can cause mold contamination and lots of other problems so uh, these are some of the situations that you're looking out for um, the way that uh, earthquake is uh, designed for by structural and civil engineers in Las Vegas is that they have different rankings of uh, earthquake problems. Uh, the alphabet is used and so for instance if one lot had a C rating and another lot had a D rating then there would be different numbers used in the calculations of the design of the structural system of the building which would increase or decrease cost. Um, we also see that um, it's possible that you may, even if you're buying an existing building or renting an existing lease space, still need a soils report. And so if you are putting in something particularly heavy, like an MRI or um, a big piece of equipment like that, that needs a heavy foundation underneath it, um, then it will... Um, most likely be necessary that you purchase it or um, again depending on the situation there's some potential for using an existing soils report depending on what it is that you're doing for that. Uh, so these soils reports are expensive $3,500 and up and why and up depends on the size of your lot, depends on if you're on a big hill where the equipment that normally does the uh, soil borings um, I can't reach, uh, how many soil borings are needed, um, if you're just doing a house or if you're just doing um, a small office building then maybe uh, two borings. If you're doing a larger building could be dozens. Um, you may have uh, some borings that are just underneath the building foundation and others for the parking lot. Now, the, if you already own the land and you haven't gotten a soils report yet, it might be a good idea to go ahead through the preliminary design process to determine where the building will be and where the parking lot will be so that you can do your borings directly under the building. If you're dealing with a small lot situation, say you have a zero lot line house, which we typically don't do as architects, but if you are watching this video and you're going to hire someone else to do a little tiny house for you, then it's entirely conceivable that the original subdivision developer may have done a recent soils investigation on all the lots throughout uh, the subdivision and you might be able to utilize their report for your foundation design. So um, look into those kind of issues before running right out and buying a soils report. Um, if you're doing a house on a normal house lot and you pretty much know where it is, then I would go ahead and get a soils report 
um, either concurrently with hiring the architect or if you're doing a little bit of investment here and a little there and you're not quite ready to start the house design yet, then that's something that you could go ahead and obtain and it doesn't preclude um, what the outcome will be for the design of the project. Um, it's just a matter of uh, having that uh, in hand when it comes time to do your design process with the structural engineer, not so much with the architect, but with the structural engineer. And then if there are any um, civil engineering issues on your property, which is quite common for uh, commercial projects, which we do quite a few of, then it, again, would be a good idea to have that in hand when you're trying to put together your numbers to see if your project is economic or not. Because these things can all be done on the basis of a guess, but if a structural engineer is designing something on a basis of a guess, then they're going to have to use the worst case scenario and that can end up costing more. So uh, if, say, you're paying, uh, doing the dumpster enclosure and um, you need a soils report because of the size of the dumpster enclosure and you end up putting a little bit more into the foundation of the dumpster enclosure to save the $3,500 for the soils report then by all means skip the soils report and let the structural or civil engineer uh, design the worst case scenario. But if you're doing um, a normal commercial building then that's not going to work for you. Anyway, uh, I hope this has been helpful in understanding what uh, soils reports uh, do and why they're important. Um, you can call us and ask us for a referral from our favorite uh, soils engineer if you like, or if you'd just like to come in and talk before you do that, the first consultation in our office is always free. So my name is Ken Small, and thanks a lot for watching the video.